1360thesource.com. Hello there, Scott Fitzgerald, and for Will Brashear in the Cincinnati Yoga School. This is Yoga, the other 98%. And I think we're, uh, we're, we're working all the bugs through here, Yogani, so that we can continue this discussion of Tantra. And uh, should we go ahead, go ahead and, back and, and wrap up with John, or do you think we need anything else from John, Yogani? Yeah, I'd like to add something to my answer to John. Okay, stand um, by. John, you still there? Yes, I'm, I am. Thanks okay. for being patient. Oh, no problem. Okay, uh, uh, something that really helps in terms of developing effectiveness uh, in the whole back technique and, and also the other methods that we're going to talk about in a little bit is uh, other yoga practices. Um, as we were talking about before, after I'd been meditating about 10 years, I just could not not do this anymore. Uh, when you're practicing deep meditation, developing inner silence, practicing uh, spinal breathing pranayama, Developing some inner ecstasy and that spaciousness we're talking we talked about before, uh, your your desire to integrate this great source of energy in the pelvic region really becomes very large, and and you begin to see sex as uh, as having much more to do with your spiritual development than it did before. So. And it's not just motivational; it's also physiological. The, neuro, the neurobiology of, a, of our inner workings become more oriented to the energy naturally coming up. So then, when you go after tantric techniques like the whole back technique, uh, you're working from a great advantage, and you're actually integrating things together, uh, which is the key to all of yoga. Uh, no one technique will deliver us to enlightenment. Uh, and I should say that again, no one technique will deliver us to enlightenment. And there are people who say that there is, and they always claim that it's theirs. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is it takes an integration of practices to really make the journey. And that's really a key point here in dealing with tantric sexual techniques. There's no way you're going to get enlightened doing tantric sex all by itself. At well, least that's my opinion. Well, none of them. In and of themselves is really enough. I mean, maybe deep meditation is going to be yeah, the one. Yeah, the only, the only, certainly the most powerful one is deep meditation because that really stimulates everything else. When inner silence is coming up, everything else gets stimulated. If you're doing deep meditation, sooner or later you're going to be doing breathing techniques, and sooner or later you're going to be doing postures and mudras and bonders. And guess what? Sooner or later you're going to address the sexual side of it too. So there is that connection, and I, that's important to mention because it will cut down the time that it takes. John, how long have you been practicing all all the different things? Oh, about uh, thirty years. Wow. So, uh, wait, wait, just I don't want to. I'll just want to put something out, and then I'll, I'll hang up. But the, the topics to perhaps address, which you probably will anyway. A tantra, um, I guess, originally originated in the Eastern culture, and could you please address at some point in your discussion how? What adaptations have to be made to practice it in a Western culture, high tech, high pressure, high <laughs> yeah. uh, culture, and, and you know how practical that is. And right. also the question of where love fits in all this. Good okay. question. And I can just listen on the on the radio. Is okay. that fine, or do Thank I need to hold John. on? Well. Uh, the first thing is 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 bringing bringing yoga practices and and practices over from from the east i think the first thing that has to be addressed is how much ritual is in there that's not really part of the basic principle and application of the principle uh so uh a lot of it is cultural um and and that's true of all of the yoga practices and, and one of the main purposes of ayp is to get to something that's non-sectarian to remove the cultural overlays so that's that, that's the first thing. The second thing is is to integrate it within our normal daily life, and uh, and that's why I say these techniques can be used within the normal framework of of your sexual lifestyle, whatever it is, and that goes for all the other practices as well. That's why we practice meditation and spinal breathing twice a day for you know 30 minutes or. Uh, longer if we're doing some additional practices, but that's it. We do it twice a day, and we go out. We have a job, we work, we have a family to raise, and so we trimmed a lot of things down, trimmed out a lot of ritual, and simplified the practices. Well, I think if we're too much ritual, I, I, I don't think that Westerners would uh, would be able to take to it. We we don't have the patience. Uh, we don't like 
foo-foo unless it's decorating for Christmas or Halloween. Um, so I think that, uh, that that ritually, you know, you know, the spike in the football in the end zone is about as far as we go as far as rituals go. Uh, Yogani, we need to take a break, uh, check out some news. Uh, give us a call if you've got some questions about Tantra or about deep meditation or about any form of advanced yoga practice whatsoever. Um, our telephone numbers are 877-345-3779. That's 877-345-3779. Or locally in the Cincinnati area, 749-1360. This is 1360thesource.com. I think Dr. Laura could use a little Tantra in her life. Just a guess. And I'm usually not wrong. 834 at uh, 1360thesource.com. Yogani back with us. And uh, once again, Yogani, your website is advancedyogapractices.com. And uh, if somebody's interested in these practices, pretty much... uh, Everything that we've discussed is available on the website or in in one of the expanding books in your library. How many books do you have so far? Well, we're just coming out with number seven right now. Uh, And uh, of those seven, five are what we call the AYP Enlightenment series, which cover meditation, spinal breathing, tantra, uh, asanas, mudras, and bandhas, and, and now samyama, which is... Uh, something hopefully we'll, we'll be talking about in a couple of weeks on the show here. Uh, but there's seven, and I'm hoping to get four more of the uh, small books done this year to round out the series. Oh, wait a minute. Now you say small books. Does that mean that there's a, a, another big book or potentially a big book in the works? Uh, yeah, then after that we're going we're gonna to do a volume two for the original big book, a companion for that to catch up with everything we've been doing uh, on the Internet and add some stuff to it. Uh, so there's quite a lot of writing left to do. Wow. Well, I'm looking forward to all of that. And uh, meanwhile, it's, it's, it's been a, a great opportunity for us to have you here. Um, Yogani on 1360thesource.com talking about Tantra. And uh, tell me, uh, what, what, if any, are some of the pitfalls that people can have in the world of Tantra? Um, self-pacing is one of the things that you talk about consistently throughout the Advanced Yoga Practices website. Um, is there Are there issues of, of self-pacing in Tantra? Um, there are, but probably not as, uh, as serious or as important as with meditation and spinal breathing and, partic- and with asanas, mudras, and bandhas that are incorporated together. Um, as I mentioned just a little while ago, an integration of practices is what it takes. Probably the biggest uh, pitfall in Tantra is people uh, getting involved in it as a standalone and then uh, not integrating other practices with it. And then there's a tendency to get off onto some of these tangents that we've been talking about earlier. That's probably the biggest pitfall because when Tantra is practiced uh, in a very easy manner that we've been talking about, it's a wonderful uh, enhancement to all of our other practices and to our experience in daily life. And uh, I personally am not aware of tantric practices themselves causing excesses uh, in energy flow like we talk about with some of the other practices. So tantra is actually a very uh, smoothing effect, a very integrating effect, especially over the long term because it, it releases a lot of the... Uh, the restrictions we have in the lower areas of our nervous system, and, and that actually leads to more smoothness. So, so like I said, I think the risk is more on the front end uh, and not mistaking Tantra to be the, the be-all and the end-all. And, and that's where we can end up with the sexual obsessions and excesses and things like that. So it's really a matter of integrating is the key. Uh, and then self-pacing, of course, um, applies uh, across the board uh, primarily to our sitting practices. Um, and we'll be talking a lot more about that, I'm sure. <laughs>